Okay, dual port radio. This is 7610, but the 7900 should operate the same way. In the menu, you go to connectors, pick it. Then you have various uh, outputs. So we're going to pick the LAN since that's what you're using. I happen to use the USB, but let's use the LAN. And one of the things you want to select is the AF output. You want to be sure that it's the AF, that's the speaker output, and not the IF. You don't want the IF. And then on the squelch, so you can turn on and off the squelch, you want to be able to control it. So don't leave it open all the time. Allow the LAN to control the squelch. And that uh, that's pretty much it for the 7610 and probably the 7900, same thing. You want to be able to change the mic and the speaker output using Windows and not let RSBA1 or ICOM Remote do that for you. So always use the default audio for speaker and mic. When you're connected to a radio, be sure to check these settings for the radio name, uh, the model number, the type of connection, whether it's LAN or USB, and the other settings. I've made a mistake here, which you'll see in a minute. Okay, this is Jeff, W6FCC, uh, talking a little bit about the audio connectivity here on a, a dual band radio like a 7610, or basically this is the LAN issue, not the USB issue. So I have a 7610, I'm connected on the LAN port. I have fixed the settings to be sure that the COM port's correct, that the baud rate uh, is the 115.2, and uh, the software turning off the radio is turned on. As long as these things line up with what shows in the radio connection set, you're good. Radio list tab on ICOM remote. Okay, so we say okay to this. And right now, let me turn the volume up, and we're not hearing anything, nothing. So you wonder what is going on. Well, usually it's because, and I'm going to turn this down for a second, usually it's because over here, if you right-click on the sounds icon in the lower right, and bring up the sounds, you have recording and these various settings. Notice here on the recording, um, testing one, two, three, four, this is me talking into my microphone and the radio would be picking that up if I were to transmit. In fact, let me check that. I want to set the power down to low and let me put on the scope here and we'll take a look at the scope. I'll put this thing in center mode and I'm in lower sideband so I'm going to go ahead and say transmit. Testing one, two, three, four and you can see that I'm transmitting. This is a good way to check whether or not you have any audio output. But again, let me turn off the transmitter. I'm not hearing anything. So let's see if we can figure out what's going on there. So we're going to bring up the uh, sounds collection here. And I just right clicked on sounds and brought it up. In the playback mode, sometimes ICOM remote will pick what was the virtual port. And if you remember here in the virtual port, that was V Audio 7. So again, let me bring up this, this audio thing. Right click on the speaker, bring up, let's say, recording audio. And that just brings it up right away. Oops, I want to do playback audio. Coming down here, I have several radios that I'm connected with. This is a separate issue, but we're in a group of people that are sharing radios. This particular 7610 is uh, using V Audio 7. Now the V-Audio is not used for normal communication. It's used to record QSOs and if you have pre-recorded messages you can stick them in these voice slots and you can transmit uh, your voice pre-recorded voice settings. That's another issue which is not we're not going to talk about that right now. But let me change this to the correct audio output and I'm, I'm now currently listening on this uh, Sound Blaster speaker setup. So I pick it and it's not the default. I pick default and all of a sudden you can hear that there's audio. So the audio problem was that it had picked a V audio which is going nowhere and it's clearly not coming out of the speakers. So you want to be sure that you've selected uh, the correct audio so that you can hear things. Oh, did I not do that right? Let me go back to that. Let's see, playback devices. Uh, oh, I didn't uh, didn't click on set default. Set default, and there you go. And now I can turn it down. 
I should be able to turn it down. Why can't I turn it down? W6FCC follow up on that last recording. I was curious why wouldn't I wasn't I able to control the audio on the uh, 7610? Well, it turns out I actually have two connections to my 7610. One of them I use through the USB port so that my little uh, laptop computer can have more users for the sharing and then I also have it connected through a LAN. Well when I went over here I had the right radio, I had the right connection but what I had done in the in the last one is I just picked this radio. Well that's the remote utility name that I gave the radio through the USB port turns out that when I connected directly the name that I'm using that's in the menu section of the radio is FCC 7610 LAN so when I went and found that there it was it was sitting up here and it had I uh, changed the COM port to 20 and turns out the baud rate's not supposed to be 115.2 it's 19.2 on inside the radio well this is correct so now when I connect Hear this? I can turn the volume up now. The other thing you want to set here is in the set mode area to when I'm on the LAN as opposed to the USB. When I'm on the LAN I want that squelch to still work. So now when I squelch the radio and the indication that it's squelching is this little pointer right here. So there you go. This is a... Uh, you gotta catch put the radio on the right radio and I had it on the wrong radio which is why I couldn't control it. Okay, so much for that fix. Use defaults when selecting audio, speaker, and mic in ICOM software and use Windows to pick the correct microphone and speaker output. You'll have the best luck that way.